And we back. We got like a month and a half into the NBA trade deadline. And we've only had one measly trade. And that was Rondo getting traded to the Cavs. That is not enough. So in today's video, I am doing 30 trades because I'm trading every team's best player. For 2022, I want to destroy every light goal that we had in 2021. So be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Let's get to destroying the NBA because that's... That's what we're about to do. So the way this is gonna work, every team is doing at least one trade. So Joel Embiid, Giannis, Zach Levine, Jared Allen, the list goes on and on. These players who end up on different teams today. So I know you used to seeing Joel in Philly, but that is dead as of right now. I just realized we need to find a way to decide which trade we do. And of course we have to get a random number generator. It's just the way things work on this channel. So. There are 28 total trades, so we put in number 28. Joel Embiid is going to the 13th team, and in this case, the 13th team is the Lakers. Just like that, LeBron is coming to Philadelphia, and Anthony Davis is coming to Philadelphia, ladies and gentlemen. It's done. Wait, wait, does everybody accept the trade? It's done. LeBron and AD get out, get out <laughs> of L.A., and this team looks kind of nice. Now, they don't have a ton of space in, but talent is talent. And LeBron with Philly is about to look, look decent. Now, since Joel got traded to the, to the Lakers, he will get traded again because every team still needs to make a trade. So the next player to get traded, of course, is Giannis. Let's see how many trades we get. We get 22 trades. Giannis is going to trade number five, which in this case is the Clippers. Kawhi and Paul George are coming back. Like, okay. I know that Giannis is the man. Of course, this guy's a two-time MVP already in his short NBA career. But if you were going to trade Giannis away, getting a guy that's one overall lower and upgrading Paul George, that's... I'm just saying, if you had to trade Giannis away, that's not a terrible trade for you, Bucks fans. Now, you do got three players that play the same position. So in order to help y'all out, I'm putting Paul George at the two, and I'm putting Kawhi... At the four. I'm, I'm going to try my best to make sure everybody has maximum position. So, like, LeBron is going to the three and Ben Simmons is going to the four. Ooh. LeBron can say the four, Ben Simmons goes to the three. And that's what your new starting lineup. I want every team to be optimized, all right? So, two trades in and we've already seen some crazy stuff. Chicago, what can my Bulls do, all right? Now, we don't have the Joel Embiid slash Giannis type talent, but we get... You know, an all-star caliber player. And Zach Levine, 29 offers. And we're doing trade number 27, which is getting Damian Lillard to the team. All right, sure, that's an increase in overall, I guess. I will take that. I mean, we have no choice. The random number generator set, that's the trade we had to do. The Cleveland Cavaliers, one of the surprising teams in this NBA season. They have to trade away their big man, Jared Allen. Now, I turned off salary cap and financial trade restrictions. So, like, somebody that is making a max contract could get traded for somebody that's making a minimum. It's all a possibility in today's video. So, Jared Allen has, I'm guessing, 29 offers. Most players of this realm of 86 is going, yeah, every team is going to be interested. And we're going to trade number 13 again. Last time we did trade number 13, wasn't that LeBron them? It is them again. The Lake Show traded LeBron and Anthony Davis, got back Joel, and now they're trading Russell Westbrook in the first to get a Jared Allen. Now they got a ton of center play, but we'll get to them once we get to them. The 76ers have another point guard on the team. And I don't even know how you optimize this. Do you let Russ play the shooting guard? His overall drops to... Jairus Garland overall dropped three, so I guess you let Russ run the two. And that Cavs fans, that's what you got now. I'm 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 sorry you traded your best player for a dude who dropped an overall once we changed his position. Next, you got the Boston Celtics to of course have Jason Tatum and Taco J. Isn't that his nickname? I ain't heard nobody use that nickname in a very long time. He's got 29 offers and he's going to trade number six which is the Memphis Grizzlies. John Moran and Dylan Brooks are coming to Boston, and Marcus Smart and Jason Tatum are going away. Wow. Okay, so this new lineup is Ja, Jalen, Dylan Brooks, Al Horford, and Rob Williams. Off the bench, you got Schroeder. You got Ennis Freedom. Hey. Hey, I'm just saying that don't look that terrible of a trade right now. You know what I'm saying? You upcreate, you increase your overall, and you got a player th that fits a knee. I'm just saying. All right, Clippers. Now, Giannis has to get traded again. So, Clip Gang, I know you saw Giannis coming to the team. You're probably super excited about it, but he's got to go get traded for a second time. And this time, we got 23 offers, and he's going to trade number 21, which is for Cat and Anthony Edwards. 
Giannis is going to the Minnesota Timberwolves. And if I'm not mistaken, Giannis got traded like six times the last time we did a video like this. And it's it, history is repeating itself right now. So now the Clippers, wow, the Clippers have Anthony Edwards. This is a team that's going towards a rebuild. The only problem is they traded away all their picks to get Paul George and Kawhi Leonard in, uh, in LA. So I, I, I don't really know. Memphis Grizzlies, now you just did a trade to get rid of John Renton, but now you have to trade Jason Tatum again. 30 trades exactly in today's video, you feel me? Back to 29 offers. 29, and we're getting trade number 10. Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell. So... The, the Grizzlies traded Ja Morant and Dylan Brooks and ended up with Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell. I'm, and they, I guess they traded away Steven Adams too. Okay, what's their lineup looking like? They have Trey Jones. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, Tyus Jones, older brother, oh, the older brother. So you got Tyus Jones. You're going to have Desmond Bain running the three. His overall even goes up. Then you got Rudy, Donovan, and Jaren. Not terrible, all things considered. 29 offers for Trey Young, and he is trade number 15, middle of the pack. And that team is L Luka and Trey Young get traded for each other again. Wow, what are the chances of that? I guess not not very like it's not very likely that that trade happens again, y'all. So their new lineup, they don't have a center. They traded away Clint Capella there, too. So their new center is Gorgie Zhang or Yekka Kangu or Bobi. They're all the same overall. But they got Luka. They're going to have Bogey. They're going to have Cam Reddish, John Collins, and then that center that we don't really know. I don't love it. <laughs> I don't love it. But now we got Jimmy Butler. Don't call me James Butler. Um, added to the team or oh, the players that need to be traded. 29 offers for Jimmy. And he's going to trade number six which is getting them Carl Anthony Town. So Jimmy is going to LA and Cat is coming here. And with that, uh, that means that Bam and Cat are on the same team. So that means uh, Cat has to run the four and his overall pretty much stays the same. So it's Cal Lowry, it is Tyler Hero, Pat Connaughton, Cat, and Bam. Not amazing, but not terrible either. You know what I'm saying? This team, I think could still be a playoff team. LaMelo, possibly the youngest player that we traded away so far. Let's see what LaMelo is gonna get. I'm guessing 29 offers. I would be correct. And they're doing number one. Anthony Davis is coming to Charlotte. Now, you know that Charlotte has struggled with finding the center for them. And now they got it. It just costed them their uh, maybe generational talent. I don't know. Uh, but now you have a center. Look at that. Now, your starting point guard is Tyrese Maxey. Shooting guard is Terry Rozier, Gordon Hayward, uh, Miles Bridges. And you got Anthony Davis. So now the 76ers have LeBron... Lamelo and Ben Simmons. Their starting power forward is LeBron, and then you got Drummond as the starting center. 76ers continue to look okay. I mean, it's hard not to look okay when you got LeBron, I guess. But now Tatum, for the third time in this video, is getting traded. And the reason he keeps getting traded, because he keeps keeps getting traded to the latter half of the 29, and that ends today. Jason Tatum is getting traded to the Cavaliers for Evan Mobley and Russell Westbrook. All right, all right, Cavs. I got to go back and look at the Cavs lineup now. So it's Garland, it's Tatum. Shooting guard is going to be uh, Colin Sexton, small forward, large market, which is still crazy to say, even though we've seen 30 games of it this year. I still cannot believe that large market is now a small forward in the NBA. And then Kevin Love. Is that a good team? I don't think they're going to get a lot of love in 2K. But the Jazz, on the other hand, they got Mike Conley as their best player. This is a team that's going to struggle. But you got Evan Mobley, who is generational, so it's fine. Uh, we got the... I hate that De'Aaron Fox overall keeps dropping in this game. I understand why he's not having a great season, but it hurts my soul as a D-Fox fan. If you want to see me rebuild the Sacramento Kings... And a long-winded series, I have that on one of my other channels. It's called Kenny2. We got like 28 episodes, so you can go binge-watch that. We're having a lot of fun, and we still ain't won a championship just yet, so it's ongoing. Um, we're doing trade number 20. And that is for Cade Cunningham and Isaiah Stewart. They are taking a step back in it when it comes to youth and development, and Cade Cunningham is now on the team. Cade is a shooting guard in this game. I think I make him a point guard. His overall goes down. Actually, Reese is going to be the point guard. You got Cade as a two. So you got Reese, Cade, Buddy, 
HB and Rashawn, that team's not going to be good. The Knicks, Julius Randle. I know there's some Knicks fans that are off Julius Randle Island after last season where he was incredible and now this season not being incredible. So this is your moment. You're trading him away and it might be a beneficial trade. 29 offers for him and he's going to trade number five, which is to the Boston Celtics for Dylan Brooks in the first. <laughs> and the Celtics just kind of came up low key. Um, because it's a one-year thing. That first round pick don't mean nothing. I wish more teams realized that that first round pick don't mean a thing. So the Celtics just got Julius Randle, but it's the game of... Oh, small forward Julius Randle does not go up in overall no more, y'all. Oh, snap. We're still doing it. We're still doing it. We're still doing it. They need all their best players to play, and Julius Randle's running the three for them now. And when it comes to the Knicks, well, um, RJ can run the two now. Yeah, RJ can run a two now, and that's your team. I'm sorry, you probably won't make the playoffs. Now we got the Lakers, and Joel Embiid is getting traded again. You still got Jared Allen on the team, though. So trading Joel Embiid away is kind of okay if you get back like a guard or a wing. You just don't need another center, and you're going to trade number 16, which is for <laughs> Jokic. Now, you're trading both of your centers that you got, but Jokic, oh my God. So Joel Embiid has to get traded again later in the video, but Jokic is now with the Lakers. They got Tobias Harris Carmelo, oh my god, this team is so top heavy. All of these guys play the same position. And I can't like I can't make I could make Aaron Gordon a shooting guard. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Oh, we make it Tobias Harris a shooting guard. He's the overall that doesn't drop. So you got <laughs> you got Tobias Harris running the two. You got Aaron Gordon at the at the four. You got Yeah, this team is solid. Look at that. Kendrick Nunn, Tobias Harris, Melo, Gordon Hayward, and Jokic. That's a that's not going to work out. Um, this is one of the rebuilded teams in the NBA. Cole Anthony is the best player on this team, according to 2K. I mean, he's tied with Wendell Carter, but he's number one on our list, so we're going to trade him away. Might be the smallest trade of the entire video. We shall see. Um, we're, we're in the process of breaking 2K. It's just not used to all of these trades going down. We got 29 offers, and it's trade number 14 that we're doing. And it legit is a small trade. But that's a huge trade for the Lakers. The Lakers get Cole Anthony. They had um, Kendrick Nunn started, and now it's Cole Anthony. That is an upgrade. That is an upgrade. See? It was a small trade, but it might be a big trade in the grand scheme. So now it's time to retrade Trey Young. Um, they got Porzingis and Clint Capella on the team. So trading away Trey Young could be decent. 28. You're getting Stephen Curry. You're getting Stephen Curry. I mean, who? wait, wait, wait. Let's look at this team now. Now, you did have to trade away Porzingis. So it's Steph... Clint and and Jalen Brunson. Uh, let's do let's do this for the for the squad. I know Jalen Brunson is small, and the same thing with Steph Curry, but we're doing that for the squad. And now they look a little bit better. Um, I don't know what to think about that team, but they got Steph Curry. The biggest cheat code in this entire video is the fact that the Brooklyn Nets still have two other superstar caliber players. So us trading away their best player is not gonna hurt them that much. They're gonna go to trade number twelve. And this trade is going to be a... No, that's going to hurt. You're trading... you traded Kevin Durant for Cade and Harrison Barnes. The Kings... The Kings just came up. The Kings just got maybe the best player in the league right now. For like nothing. Buddy, you could go back to run a shooting guard. Now it's a Tyrese and Kevin Durant show. Okay, this is... Their, their starting lineup is right here. This is their starting lineup. Is that good? Is that bad? We shall find out. Next, we have Joel B getting traded for the... Third time? Fourth time in this video? He has to go again. 29 offers. And this time, we're going to trade number six, which is for Jimmy Butler and Anthony Edwards. So he's going to the Clippers. The Clippers don't have a lot going on. But now the Brooklyn, oh, I'm sorry, the Denver Nuggets have Jared Allen, Jimmy Butler, Anthony Edwards, Michael Porter Jr., who I'm running at the power forward. And then they got Monte Moore starting. I mean, if you had to trade away your best player in Jokic, you got back Jimmy. You got back Jared, and you got back Anthony Edwards. And that's This is a team that can be decent now and then still be good in a few years because Jared Allen's has signed in a max extension. Anthony Edwards is in year number two. Michael Porter Jr. is in year number whatever, but just signed a good extension. So this is a team that has youth and now. We shall see how good they are. The Pacers are a team that told us two months ago that they wanted to blow it up but haven't made a trade just yet. And now we're forcing their hand, and they have to trace a bonus. 29 trades. 22 is the one that we're doing. 
and that is to the Houston Rockets for nothing. They said they wanted to be a rebuilding team, and they got a rebuilding trade. I'm not even going to try to fix this. This team is not making the playoffs. I ain't gonna, I'm not even going to waste my time. Now we have Zion. We have not seen Zion play in so long. I, for, I even forgot how, bro. Nah, his play style is something you won't forget. But he has to be traded. I'm guessing 29 offers, and we do have 29 offers, and we're doing trade number 20. Trade number one was for LeBron, by the way. But trade number 20 is going to be for De'Aaron Fox. The Pistons just came up because, again, that first round pick don't mean nothing. So, yeah, I don't really need to make any changes here. Um, they're looking all right. Next, we're going to the Pistons. So, Zion has to get traded back to back. I'm sorry, Pistons fans. You thought you had one, but you have, you're have. you getting somebody else. 29 offers again, of course. This time, we're going to trade number nine, which is for Cat. And bam. That's a good trade for y'all. That's a really good trade for y'all. Now, the... Now, the Heat, I'm sorry that you just did that um, because for a one-year challenge, that does not make you better. But if we was going multiple years in the future, I mean, that might be decent. But now you got Dwayne Detman as your starting center. And in real life, Dwayne Detman has been started for some time, and he's been high. But in this game, I don't know if he's going to really hold up like that. So I'm making Jeremy Grant a small forward. Um, they don't even have it. Rodney Magruder is the best shooting guard on the team. Sadiq Bey can't even go to shooting guard. I don't even know what to make of y'all shooting guard position. I think I just let it be had be. And you got Cat, you got Jeremy, and you got Bam. That might be good enough to maybe make a playoff spot, but that shooting guard position is so bad. The thing that I ain't even mentioned is that once we start simulating, teams will be making more trades. So this team don't have a shooting guard, but they might be able to make a trade for a shooting guard later in the video. I'm just not forcing their hand to do it. Now we got Pascal Siakam as the next guy to go. I mean, they got a lot of guys that are very similar. Fred Van Vliet and OG Ananobi, similar overalls. Even uh, the rookie, Scotty Barnes. But Pascal is still number one on, on 2K's list, so he's the one that got to get moved. 29 offers. Trade number 27 is what we're doing, and it's for CJ. Boom, there it is. They got CJ McCollum on the team. And what do you do with this lineup? Um, I think you leave it as is. Sabonis so has to get moved for a second time in this video. Um, they, they got him here for nothing. So if they could trade him away and get something decent, then they coming up. Number five is for Julius Randle. Okay, well, well now the Boston Celtics just added another big that can't run small forward. Um, so they got to figure that out themselves. I'm not going back to y'all. DeJounte Murray, borderline all-star caliber player this season. He's been great. Uh, he might be on my ballot if I was turning one in right now, but he has to get traded from the Spurs. And he's going somewhere else. And he's going to trade number 10. Trade number 10 is going to send him to Charlotte. And that's a come up for Charlotte. Hold on. That's real life a come up for Charlotte. Who, if I'm not mistaken, is looking pretty decent. And they just traded a first round pick and a second year player for him. So it's DeJounte Murray, Anthony Davis, Gordon Haver, Miles Bridges, and Terry Rozier? Charlotte looking kind of nice. Ain't even going to last. Charlotte is looking kind of nice. That is a big time trade for them. So the next one that we are doing is the Devin Booker. D Book is let is the next one to get moved. I mean, he has been loyal to the city when they were bad. They won like 17 games one season, and now they're a championship contender. But he has to go to the 26 team, which is gonna send him to Minnesota um, for Giannis and D'Angelo Russell. Now they are trading DeAndre Aiden in this trade as well, but we got Chris Paul and Giannis on the same team. D'Angelo Russell has to run shooting guard now, and that's fine. So it's Chris Paul, D'Angelo Russell, Mikael Bridges, Giannis, and then and then JaVale McGee. We shall see. When you have Giannis on your team, you're instantly like a contender caliber team. And this might be good for my boy CP because I want my boy CP to win a championship. It might be this video. Shea Gears Alexander has been uh, really, really good. One of my favorite players in the league since his rookie season. Um, I remember watching his first summer league game because I don't watch college ball. So I watched his first summer league game and I was like, this is the guy I, I really like and he's been really good. He has to get traded to the number three team, which is the Chicago Bulls. I will take that. We had to give up Dame for it. So we're losing overall. But I just said that boy is one of my favorite players and I got him on my favorite team. So you got him at the one. I guess Lonzo at the two, DeMar DeRozan, Javante Green, and it is what it is. We has to keep it moving. The next team is um, Devin Booker getting moved uh, again, so maybe Minnesota comes up. We shall find out. 28 offers. There's one team that was like, nah, we couldn't use the book. And he's going to 20s. He's going to Portland. Okay. The Timberwolves kind of win this trade, man. They get two very solid, very good players. And they give up one really good player and then a bench warmer, basically. So that's a solid trade for them. So their starting lineup is Pat Bev, Zach Levine, Small Ford can be Malik Beasley. And then they got Pascal and DeAndre Aiden. 
that li that might be a playoff. There's so many teams that you can argue might be a playoff team. And for the third trade in the row, if I'm not mistaken, oh, I'm sorry, third trade in the last four, D book is getting moved again. Hopefully he ain't bought no apartment or no condo in whatever cities because we keep moving him. But this time he's going to the Cleveland Cavaliers and Jason Tatum and Colin Sexton are coming here. Okay. All right. You traded away Dame and CJ. And now your new team is Colin Sexton, Nurkic, and, and, and Jason Tatum. I, I don't know. Trey Young, and then we, we got two more trades left, y'all. Trey Young has to get moved for the third time in this video. And then we got Bradley Beal as the last one, and that's it. That's a wrap. 29 offers again. And this time, we are getting trade number 20, Pelicans. All right. I, I don't know what to think about the trade. We got to go back through it. And then the last trade is Bradley Beal getting moved. And I'm guessing it's going to be 29 offers because he's Bradley Beal, and he deserves 29 other teams looking for him. Yes. And he is going to trade number four, which sends him to Cleveland. So Devin Booker is the leader for most person traded, I think. I think that's five times he's got traded. And that's, okay. All right. So I, I think I simulate one day in the future, real quick, one day in the future. And then we got to do this for every team. They're like, hey, our roster looks different. So I'll be back. Okay. So I want to quickly just go through team intel for, you know, to look at some things. I don't see this team being very good. This team might win the championship. LaMelo, the, one of the Martin brothers, Ben Simmons, LeBron. Come on, that team is ridiculous. I would even start. I would start Seth Curry because I need more shooting there, but I'm not in control of that team. Um, the Bucks still look like a contender. Now, they don't have Giannis, but they got Kawhi, Paul George, Chris Middleton, Drew Holiday, and Bobby Portis. Defensively, that team should be top three. Then we got the Bulls, who might be something, maybe not. The Cavs might be something, maybe not. Um, David Nwaba is starting with the Celtics, but they got a lot of talent. Six-man Al Horford there. DeJounte, Terry Rozier, Gordon Hayward, Miles Bridges, and Anthony Davis. That might be my favorite team we constructed today. It might, it's not the best, but it might be my favorite team we constructed today. I think this is like a real roster. You know what I'm saying? This looks like a real roster to me. They even got Oubre. They got PJ Washington off the bench. This is like a real roster, bro. I like that team. A lot of these teams don't look great. Um, like even this team, it got Steph Curry and Clint Capella, so it might be a playoff team, but it don't look great. You know, this team is going to look great regardless because they got the two top end talents, but the trades that we did don't make them look any better. This team looks interesting. They're starting Composite instead of Monte Morris. I don't know why it's not my team though. I don't know, man. There's not a, we did all these trades. There's not one team that's like completely stands out above the others. This team is very, very interesting to me. If I had to pick my finals contenders... It's Suns and 76ers. Those are my top two at the moment. And as I continue to look, it's Suns, 76ers. The Timberwolves team looks interesting. And then, yeah, I think it's Suns, 76ers, bro. I legit think those are my two teams that I'm, I'm expecting to be like the top of the conferences. As we start our simulation, I want to remind you to leave a like on the video. Which trade was the most mind-blowing? Which one do you think puts the team into t championship contention? And let me know down below. Well, we talked about the Steph Curry team, and he went on to average 41 points per game on 50, 40, 90. So there's that. Um, <laughs> Kate Cunningham won Rookie of the Year. Six-man goes to Porzingis, who I guess is backing up Draymond Green. Um, defensive player of the year goes to Giannis. Tyrese Maxey was most improved. Colts year goes to Colts Bud. And that's the that's that Bucks team. Yeah, I forgot to mention that Bucks team because they got Kawhi, Paul George, Middleton, and Andrew Holiday. So yeah, that team is nice. All right, all right. I cannot believe that man averaged 41. Um, so Dame, new team, crazy statistics. LeBron, crazy statistics. Zion, crazy statistics. Jokic, crazy. Why did everybody go out and thought they had to average 30 plus? Except for Jokic, because he also hit the nine assists to match it. But I would guess LeBron also had nine assists. Or Steph Curry, seven assists. Dame, eight assists. Um, second team, we have Book, 36, 28. Why is everybody so everybody really out here going crazy? I love to see that. Zach Levine went back to Minnesota where it all started for his NBA career, and he averaged 30, 34. The Suns defense had to be elite. They got two all defensive players, and I guess the Bucks do too. The Bucs got two on, on opposite teams, but two all-defensive players nonetheless. All right, y'all. Here we go. What teams made it? What teams didn't? Was I right? Was I wrong? I said the 76ers team was going to be great, and they were. They were the two seed. I guess I kind of, when I was seeing the real contenders, I kind of overlooked this team. I forgot about these boys. They got so much depth. They, they just run deep. They just, they, they're crazy like that. You know what I'm saying? They were by far the best team in the conference. Um, 
I mean, I guess not by far. Four games behind is the 76ers. Those two teams dominated. Then after that, it was just kind of like a hodgepodge, a couple different teams. You got Zion's team here, who averaged 34. You got this Raptors team that I said was kind of well-rounded and kind of decent. You got this team, Al Horford didn't win six man of the year, but I bet he impacted the game a lot. Um, the worst team was the Orlando Magic because, yeah, they didn't do anything. They traded Cole Anthony to the Lakers for like a pick. So, yeah, they're, they weren't great. Um... Same team with same thing with this team. They traded some bonus away for Eric Gordon in a pick. So yeah, these teams are going to struggle. I'm surprised this team was as bad as what they were. I didn't know if they were gonna be a playoff team, but them being the third worst team in the conference is surprising considering they still have Jeremy Grant, Carnton Towns, Bam. But their guard play is so, so mediocre. They didn't make any trades, like I said that they might. And um, yeah, they they had so many bigs and not enough the smalls. You feel me? Out west, we have the Memphis Grizzlies, a sleeper team. I mean, they got a little big three, and then Desmond Bain going to play his role, and his shot tendency is too low in this game, by the way. It's only at 50. Raise Desmond Bain's shot tendency. Hashtag Bain's tendency's improvement or something, because he, he should be averaging 15, 16, 17s, and not the 10s that they got him. Um, but, yeah, I underestimated this team. They look really good. Um, but the whole conference, the Western Conference is, mess, is messing up the Eastern Conference. They, the top five seeds are all within three games of each other. They went down to like the last week and a half of the NBA season. So then we have this Nuggets team that is surprisingly good. But I think in the moment we were like, oh, that team looks solid. But I didn't think they were going to be even this good. I was miss, uh, missing Steph Curry won MVP. They were the three seed and they won three games in a row to get up there. So they, they really out here. Five game losing streak to end the season for the Lakers. They were the one seed of like for the majority of the year. And then they go on their losing streak and they lose. Um, so this is the team where we had Tobias Harris run shooting guard. And look at that. This is a message to coach Doc Rivers. <laughs> run Toby at the two because he can do it. He had a career year at the shooting guard position. That's hilarious. Arondo's here. I, I, oh, because. They haven't made that trade in 2K just yet. Okay, Utah's here. The worst team were the Spurs with, yeah, yeah, this is a rebuilder team. They got Maxi though, who won most improved, so that's solid. And then OKC had Dame, and he had crazy numbers, but they didn't win a bunch of games. Um, Houston, they had Julius Randle at the three. I forgot about that, but nah, nah, they didn't do it. And the Warriors being bad is surprising because they just have talent. You know what I'm saying? I just thought they... Yes, they lost Steph Curry, but I thought they'd be good enough to at least make a play-in, and they were not. All right, let's see who ends up in the championship. I still have my picks from before we saw all of that, and my picks were the Suns, who are the eighth seed, by the way. I thought the Suns are going to be a lot better than that. That's probably dead, and then I said the 76ers. So, yeah, maybe one of my teams ends up making it because that Suns dream is dead. They got swept. Giannis and Chris Paul and Mikael Bridges, I thought that was going to be good enough. They were not. So we got a 1-4-2-6. We got a 1-5-2-3. All right. Get to this conference finals. Let's boil it down to the best four teams in the league. The six-seeded Clippers close out game sevens two times. And it's Jamal Murray and Joel. And in the first time they beat the three seed, it was Jamal Murray and Joel. Those two are looking great. Jamal Murray kind of blessed. You know, he spent the first half of his career playing with uh playing with Jokic, and now he's playing with Joel. Just the best centers in the league. He keep getting those. All right, but as a six seed, will they be able to? Will they be able to? Will they be able to? Bro, they just dominated. Isaiah Hardenstein and Zubach. What? The six seed going against the 76, which is the team I picked. And look at this. Look at this. Clip gang of don't bang. They looked well overmatched in this game. But you could have said that in all the other series, if you ask me. So let's see how they how they perform. They lose game one. Okay. They win game two. LeBron with a triple-double. Double-double for La, uh, LaMelo. I almost said Lonzo. And then almost a triple-double for Ben Simmons was not enough because Joel had a feast. Game three. Oh, I, I'm, I'm low-key rooted for the Clippers because they're the underdogs. It's a three-point loss in overtime, man. Three-point loss in overtime. And they clamped up in the fourth quarter and even get back into this game. But they lost it in OT because LaMelo had a triple-double. Oh, man, this seems ridiculous. LeBron was close to a 38-point triple-double. Come on, Clippers. Ah, 3-1. It is a 3-1 series. Do not end it right here. Do not end it right here. I need that Clippers team to turn up for me. It's not looking good. Huh. 
one of my predictions was right when I said that that 76 team was going to win it all or be one of the two teams in the conversations, and they did it. I mean, they were just way too talented. I don't, don't even ask me about the fit of having LaMelo and LeBron and, and Ben Simmons all on the court together. Don't ask me about that. 2K only cares about talent. And this team had a ton of talent. Hey, man, if you enjoyed the video, again, be sure to leave it a like. We're trying to break all of the goals, all of the records that we did in 2021 and 2022. And I cannot do that if you don't leave a like. And I cannot do that if you don't subscribe to the channel. So do those things. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Peace.